I'm having a weird time. Oh, uh, hey, yeah. folks, hey, folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw. Hey, folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw. This is weird, but I'm in Niles, Ohio. And this is weird, but I'm in Niles, Ohio. And I'm having a weird time. And I tell you, this thing's a really quite weird around here. And I tell you, this thing's a really weird around here. By the book. That's really weird. By side. By the book. That's really weird. Here we are in Niles, Ohio at the Erie Frequency Film, Toy, Comic, and Pop Culture Expo. And I have uh, Jim and Deborah Duggan. Uh, uh, Jim is a professional wrestler and Deborah is a professional wrestler's wife. <laughs> uh, Jim, could you tell me a little bit about your background? Sure. I'm originally from a small town in upstate New York called Glens Falls, New York, which is north of Albany, uh, Saratoga, Lake George area. And unlike a lot of wrestlers, I actually had a great family upbringing. I like to call it Mayberry. Uh, my dad was a police officer. I have three older sisters. And I had a great high school career. My uh, senior year in high school, I won the New York State Amateur uh, Wrestling Championship. Uh, my shot put record from 1973 still stands today. And uh, I said, what a bunch of wimps they got up there. <laughs> And uh, football was my main sport, so I was lucky enough to be recruited by Joe Paterno at Penn State. I came here to Ohio State and met Woody Hayes and was recruited by Ohio State. But I ended up playing my college ball for Southern Methodist University in Dallas. And I had awesome. a nice career down there, and I was with the Atlanta Falcons in 1977. I had two major knee surgeries, and I was on an injury reserve the whole year. Uh, 78, I played up with the uh, Toronto Argonauts for a short time. And then in 79, I made the transition to professional wrestling. So I've got to ask, Deborah, how did you and Jim meet? A friend introduced us uh, almost 30 years ago. Really? Yes. His name was Jay Youngblood, and he was a friend of mine, and he met Jim, and he was staying with Jim for, I don't know, a month or so? Yeah, a little while he stayed with me in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And you guys were in Mississippi or something, right? Yeah, Biloxi, Mississippi. He said, I know just a girl for you, Jim. He says, you're going to meet her and fall in love, and... You guys are going to get married, and I'll never see either one of you again. Really? Yeah. He, he was met, so he, right. He yeah. introduced us. We fell in love. We got married, and we were just talking about trying to locate him again. We got word that he had died of a heart attack. Oh no! So he introduced us. Maybe we fell in love. Uh, yeah. Got married, and we never saw him. Prediction again. was true. Wow. And that was uh, April. Will be our 25th wedding. <laughs> right on. Right on cue there, 25, give me a kiss, beautiful. Oh, no, <laughs> Either one of us can turn our heads. <laughs> yeah, so. We'll, we'll pretend that was actually planned. <laughs> we we'll planned that, are you kidding? Yeah. The General Lee. General yeah. Lee from Dixon Hazard. <laughs> yeah, we've had a, a great run. Uh, you know, our business is very hard. Uh, uh, tough business. A lot of folks think, you know, wrestling is wrestling, but, you know, you miss most of your holidays, most of your birthdays. Uh, high divorce rate, high alcoholism rate, extremely high death rate. Yeah, it's a very tough profession. And what a lot of folks don't realize about professional wrestling, they're like, ah, well, that wrestling, that's all fake. But how competitive it is. And I tell these young boys, I say, hey, you know, I want to be a WWE wrestler. I say, son, you know, this year, there's 1,500 guys playing in the NFL. There's 1,000 NBA basketball players. There's 120 WWE wrestlers. It's a television show. It's much more competitive than sports. Right. You know, people have no, you know, that has nothing to do with athletic ability or anything else. It's a numbers game. If there's 1,500 spots or 120 spots, who you got the better chance of making it? But I always tell kids, chase your dreams, go what you want, but make sure you have something to fall back. Always finish school and go for it because, you know, you might get the break. You never know. You might get that brass ring or gold ring. Excuse me if you're lucky. But uh, always have something to fall back on. Sounds like you got your gold ring right next to you. Yes, we've had a, you know, we uh, are lucky enough. We have two daughters, Celia and Rebecca, uh, 20 and 18. Uh, one a senior in high school, one on a volleyball scholarship to Coker College, a little Division II scholar, a school. Awesome. About uh, an hour away from the house, close enough for her to have her independence, but close enough to drop off the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> and we love to have her home, yeah. Speaking of brass rings, uh, 
let's uh, say call it a brass ring. Last night you had a premiere of a movie. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. We just got done shooting early this year a movie called Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies. Kind of exactly tells what it is. You know, it's, exactly. it's, it's not Sound of Music. It's Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies. But it's uh, my good friend Roddy Piper, uh, Kurt Angle, uh, Matt Hardy, Shane Douglas, uh, Rebby, uh, Rebby, one of the TNA girls, uh, some penthouse pets, you know, a little something for everybody. And, uh, <laughs> lots of zombies. Lots, they had almost okay. 500, 500 extras. zombies. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we did it in Parkersburg, West Virginia, at an old uh, closed down a sane asylum. And uh, that was a lot of fun to do. <laughs> but uh, you know, because uh, recently we just filmed the deal. WWE did a show called Legend House, where they took eight wrestling legends and they put us in uh, Harpo Marx's mansion. Oh, really? Palm Springs, California, for five weeks, and just by coincidence, I ended up rooming with the Roddy Piper, hot Rod Roddy Piper, and I knew him, but I didn't really know him. So the first two days we were just eyeballing each other, you know. He's keeping his eye on me, and I keep, boom, we hit it off, uh, became best friends, and uh, had a lot of fun. And hopefully the WWE will air that. It was uh, uh, myself, uh, Hillbilly Jim, Roddy Piper, Tony Atlas, Pat Patterson, Mean Gene Okerlund, uh, Howard Finkel, and Jimmy Hart for five weeks locked in a house with no cell phones, no TVs. You want to talk about a battle royal, brother? <laughs> <laughs> no newspapers, no, no idea newspapers. what was going on in the world. And anytime you called home. Yeah, he would call. You could hear um, Gene in the background saying this call has been recorded. Everybody record your calls. He recorded everything. Um, I didn't, the, you know, we've been together almost 30 years. And in that time, the longest time we've ever gone, I mean, he's been all over the world. It's five days we went, we went without talking to each other was while he was in California because they took his cell phone when he got there and I didn't talk to him for five days and it was crazy because I you know had no way to get in touch with him. Wow. I could have. Well, if you had an emergency, have. Yes, they I could have gotten in touch with him, but yeah. it was you know and it was five weeks was a long time for him to be gone. That's a long time away from your family, yeah. you know. That's a, that's a big part of our job is the, the travel, you know. Uh, I mean, everybody sees the 10, 15 minutes in the ring, you know, especially when you're WWE, you have 15, 18,000 people screaming and cheering, but you don't see that long night dragging your bag down a long the poltergeist hallway in some, you know, hotel room. And, no doubt. And getting up at 6 in the morning to catch your next flight. Uh, it's a, it's a tough business. Uh, well, that's what I tell another thing. I tell all these young kids. Uh, the father brings up the young boy. He says, "You know, I want my young son to be a professional wrestler." I tell him, "I say, get golf clubs. That's where the money's at. Right. <laughs> and a lot easier on the body. Right. But that's Absolutely. the whole deal. You're always a phony wrestler." Until you go to court, you know, you go to court, you're a trained killer. You know, you go out at a nightclub some night and you run across the, the gumball, he's out there, you, you phony son of a gun. But if you have any action, it's the old joke goes like this, 10, 20, 30,000. <laughs> the lawsuit just racks up. So nowadays, it's hard to go out without security. But if you meet 100 people, 99 are cool, but there's always one guy that wants to arm wrestle you or... You know, you look bigger on TV or Axaw. Well, I'm 60 years old, brother. You know, <laughs> back in the day, it's uh, 300 pounds, you know. 300 pounds, you know. <laughs> Weird.